Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, a few videos back, uh, many of you might recall, I built a whisper beacon. Well, it was a partial kit. I built the filter board for it. Most of the main board came pre-assembled from Zach Tech. Uh, he makes this nice little standalone whisper beacon. And I built it into an enclosure here. All right, you can see it in there. And I did that so that I'd have a BNC connector on the side so it would be protected in this metal box. Uh, USB port and uh, GPS antenna connection are there, plus the two indica status indicator LEDs. And uh, it sits right up here on my shelf, where I have it hooked into my uh, third input on my radio switch here. So uh, at any time, if I'm testing an antenna outside and I want to do some whisper beaconing, I just reach up, punch that button, uh, make sure the tuner is uh, bypassed, and I'm switched to the right antenna, and uh, I plug in the USB for the uh, whisper beacon and let it do its thing. Just that easy. Uh, it's It's been great. I, that's what I, I've really enjoyed using it for that. As you might recall from the original video, the control software that Harry, the author um, of this project, wrote was Windows only. And I mused that I might take the time to write something uh, for Linux users, possibly for Mac users, maybe in Perl or Python. I was thinking of those two languages because they're both interpreted and they're both open uh, and available on all platforms, pretty much. Well, I, I settled on Python. A friend of mine that's a programmer told me it's one of the easier ones to work with. So since I'd never written anything in either of these languages, um, I needed it to be fairly simple. <laughs> and it was not bad. Um, I did write a script. I wrote a control script for this whisper beacon that allows you to set the current call sign, enable or disable um, the various bands for transmit, for beaconing. It has the ability to band hop. Um, uh, to enable a real-time mode where you can turn it on for whisper or as a signal generator, and to change the startup mode. The uh, fourth function that I implemented was to change the startup mode. What does it do when you first power it on? Does it do nothing, or does it come up as a whisper beacon? You know, so you can make that change. So those are the four major functions that I implemented in my script. Um, Harry and his Arduino software wrote an excellent API, Application Programming Interface, which I demoed in the last video, where you could send it simple commands over the serial port, and uh, it would then respond and do whatever. Um, so I basically wrapped all that around in a script, menu-driven script in Python. Let's go to the computer and, and take a quick look at the script. Well, here we are. This is my Python script. It's kind of long, and it looks really complicated and crazy. But it's really kind of simple. Um, there's one of the most complex routines right there, just the uh, serial port routine where we're talking to the device. Uh, the main program is down here at the bottom. Python is a script that's interpreted from the top down. So if you're going to create functions, which are kind of like subroutines, if you remember from basic programming, uh, go sub to go to a subroutine that would then return so you could have if you, had a, if you had a piece of program code that uh, you used over and over again, instead of writing it every time, you'd create a subroutine. That same idea is uh, what's called a function in most high-level languages. And uh, in uh, Python, you uh, have the same thing, functions, but you have to define all those first because the script will be processed by the parser top-down. So all your variables um, have to be declared and all your functions have to be defined first and then when you get down after doing all of that, eventually you get to where you can have your main program. And in my case, that is mostly calling functions I wrote. Um, and I commented everything, so like right here, get serial port. The first thing we do is uh, I set the serial port variable to whatever value is returned by the function I wrote called set serial. And set serial uh, tests all of the common serial port device names for Arduino under Linux and under Mac until it finds the device. 
Once it finds a serial port, it talks to it and makes sure that that's a, a Zaktek Whisper Beacon on that port, and then it sets um, or returns that file, that serial address or serial file name, because in Linux everything is a file. Um, it returns that as <clears throat> this variable, serial port. And then so from the rest of the program, I reference that. So I get the serial port, I find the device, I know what serial port it's on, that's automatic. The user doesn't have to enter it. I wish more programs did that. It's not that hard to do. It sure makes things easier for the user. Just plug in the device, let the software find it. Uh, for Linux, I do one additional thing here. I wrote a function to check the user's security for the serial device. Under Linux and Unix, uh, there was security for serial ports, and it's a, it's a standover or carryover from Unix days when most users talked to a mainframe with serial terminals. They had to have access granted to the serial ports for them to access the machine. So I check for that, and if the user's um, username does not have the proper security, I give a recommendation on how to fix that. Another thing that I wish more software did. Um, we get the call, current call sign that's set in the device. Again, I wrote a function that talks to the device and gets the call sign. And then we get into the main menu right here. Um, and it's just a while loop. While this condition do this stuff uh, is basically what's going on. And the condition is while the menu entry that the user has entered does not equal zero. And zero in the menu means exit the program. So as long as the user has not chosen to exit the program, do this stuff. And what does this stuff do? Um, it prints the menu out, gets an entry from the person, the user, and then it decides what to do based on that entry. And I have a little error handling um, that I did so that if they don't enter a valued option, or val so if they don't enter a valid option, it'll print, hey, bad entry, I don't understand, and then uh, give you another chance. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty complex looking, but it's really not too bad. Python is pretty readable, you know. Let's just take a look at one statement here. Out frequency, which is a variable, equals the variable pad plus string of the variable raw frequency, meaning take this variable if it's numeric and represent it as a string. So if, if this variable raw frequency contains 7042, instead of treating it as the value 7042, treat it as the text string 7042. Uh, so this variable out frequency is going to e end up equaling pad plus this, whatever's in pad. So it's it's readable like that, you know? It's, it's a readable language. It's pretty easy to write with. I actually found myself coding pretty quickly once I got rolling on it. All right, let's, uh, let's demo it. Enough chatter, let's demo it. All right, so I'm in a terminal. There is my script, whisper beacon 1-1.py. So we will type python dot slash current directory wspr beacon 1-1.py. Plug in the device, wait one second, and press enter. Okay, I am plugging in the USB port. And you'll see the device light up and start doing its thing. Now it's presently set to start up in beacon mode, so it's going to start transmitting. But back to the screen, I'm going to press enter. And now the software is looking for the device. It found TTY USB 0. It talked to that port. There's our announcement text from the device, so we know that we are connected. And here's our main menu. Now, option one, change current call sign. And it shows what the current call sign is in the device. So we'll enter one to change it. Enter new call sign. Use uppercase KB7TBT. <laughs> James, I know you're laughing right about now. Change call sign? Yeah. Updating the device. It talks to the device.
and then we're back. And the current call sign is now KB7TBT. I'm going to change it back to my call sign. I don't want to be beaconing as James. And again, we update the device. All right, the second menu option to enable or disable the bands that the beacon is using. All right, it's going to read the current band settings from the device and then it'll show them to us. There we go. Current bands enabled or disabled and each of the bands in the E for enabled or D for disabled. And as you can see, 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, and 10 meters are enabled. If I wanted to change something, if I wanted to like enable 15 meters, all right, I'd enter band number to toggle. So number nine is 15 meters. So I'll enter nine. And you can see now 15 meters changed to enable. And it wants me to say zero when I'm done. So let's hit zero. And now it's going to update the device with our new configuration for bands. And if I go back in to enable or disable bands, it'll read the current settings from the device. And there we go, 15 meters is enabled. I'll disable it, zero, back to the menu. Okay, item number three, change live mode. This will change the mode that the device is operating in at this point in time while it is plugged into our computer. So if I was doing some things and I just wanted to do a whisper beacon right now, I could do so. If I wanted to use it as a signal generator, I could do so. So I'll hit three. It tells us we're gonna set the live mode. Mode choices are whisper beacon on, signal generator mode, or abort back to main menu. So I'm gonna turn the whisper beacon on. Now looking at the device right now, it's just the green light that's on, no activity light. So if I hit one to turn the beacon on, you should now see the yellow light is blinking because it is in whisper beacon mode and it's about to start transmitting. And on our screen, we can see whisper mode on, press enter to stop and I'll press enter because I really don't wanna transmit right now. And we're back to the main menu. Okay, let's look at the signal generator, shall we? For the signal generator, I've got my radio turned on. Presently, it's hooked to nothing. Its antenna is disconnected. The uh, beacon is connected to the antenna. Uh, so we're gonna briefly do this. Um, I'll select two, signal generator mode, and it'll say enter the frequency in hertz. What are we on? 3939 kilohertz. Okay, so we'll go 3939123. Now, I'm probably going to hear nothing because I'll be zero beated, but we will turn it on and see what happens. Yep. <clears throat> there it is. You can see the carrier right there, and I'm zero beated to it. So let me move up a little in frequency. So as you can see, it's definitely generating a, a signal. And I'll hit enter to abort the signal generator. There we go. So that's signal generator mode. The final menu entry is to set the startup mode. And what that is, is when I power this device up, what is it going to do? Is it gonna be a whisper beacon or is it gonna do nothing? There was a third option for signal generator, but I couldn't think of a reason why I would want it to just start throwing a carrier out as soon as I power it up. If I can think of a valid reason or use for that, I might add that to the script. But for now, we can just set it to either do nothing when we power it up or to go right into whisper mode. And I'm gonna set it to default in whisper mode when I power it up. It'll configure the device and we're back to the menu. Now, when I plug the device in, it's gonna be a whisper beacon, so. That's the basic functionality of my script. It does uh, the common things you might have to do with the device, uh, and it should work for Mac and Linux users. So there you go, a simple Python script. It should definitely work if you're on Linux. Uh, I have not at this point in time tested it on Mac, but the serial port auto detection should recognize the Arduino on Macs. So it should work for Mac users. 
there is a direct link to the uh, script in the description below in the video on my GitHub that I created for it. If you're running Linux or you're running uh, Mac and you happen to pick up this Whisper beacon from ZachTech, give my script a try and hopefully it'll work for you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.